What is the body in the heart of God? He wants to hear your voice every morning. It's not about what he can give. There are many women here. Imagine if your wife, bought, your husband bought you a car every day, but you can't see him. The car will become a body. Imagine if your husband bought you jewelries every day, yet he's unfaithful. You will live in a mansion, but you'll be crying. Because you can't even tell where he is. He tells you he's going to East Legon. The next thing is in Kumasi in the hotel. The jewelry will become like a piece of trash. Because it's not about what you have to give. It's about yourself. Intimacy is what he's looking for. The burden in the heart of God is that he knows you by name. And he wants to hear your voice. He wants to mingle with you. He wants to commune with you in a way that no other man knows. The Bible said, they that overcome it, he shall give a name that no other man has. So the love of the father with you or concerning you is a jealous love. Your brother doesn't know it. The kind of love and intimacy he wants to have with prophet is different a million times from the kind of intimacy he wants to have with me. So he will call him by a specific name. He will call me by a specific name. He will call you by a specific name. There are pet names that he has for every one of us. So he, he wants to, and it's an insatiable appetite of the father. But many don't know. Waiting, coming to God is to ask for things. In fact, God said to asking for things before he left. Don't tell me about the mountain. Take power to deal with the mountain. So when you have any need, command it, it will be done. He said, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. He said, say unto this mountain, don't tell me. Be thou removed, be thou cast away. And if you do not doubt in your heart, you will have whatsoever you say. So whatsoever you need, just command it. That's why he made you a king. But beyond that, every morning, he wants you to look for him. This is why certain men became so dear to God. The highest rank in Zion is not the rank of an apostle. It's not the rank of a prophet. No. Go and check the patriarchs. Some of them entered into. Those ones are not gifted. They are end. They are end. So in James chapter 2 verse 23, they said, even Abraham, your servant, whom you called your friend, a man walks with God until he becomes the friend of God. That's the journey of intimacy. He is more than a prophet. He is more than an apostle. He is the friend of God. Huh. In Isaiah 41 verse 8, he called him the friend. Three times in scriptures, Abraham was called the friend of God. That man is, is bigger than a prophet. He's bigger than an apostle. An apostle is a messenger. A prophet is a servant. But a friend is one that knows the heart of his father. And then there is a realm called the realm of sons. They are not gifts. They are journeys of intimacy. How do you become a son? Not by being born again by beholding him daily. We all with open faces, beholding us in the glass, the image of the Lord, we are changed. So sonship is image. Is bearing the image of God. And bearing the image of God is not a function of his life, it's a function of beholding. So for you to become a son in this kingdom, you must behold him continually. That's stature in the spirit. And then another level in the spirit is the level of fatherhood. He said, I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. So a friend, a son, and a father is one that have embarked on the journey of intimacy. So they keep graduating. They keep graduating. A son knows this. A friend knows the secret of his friend. A son does not only know secret. He has inheritance in the kingdom. And then a father does not only have inheritance in the kingdom. He inherits God himself. These are realms 
that will be hallowed for eternity. And by prayer, this journey is possible. It's the journey of intimacy. This is what these guys knew. That David, a king, will dance until his clothes will be torn and he's not aware. <laughs> that guy is pursuing something that is bigger than kingship. He's pursuing intimacy. He's pursuing something that no man can give. It's a place in the heart of God. I have a friend. His name is called Pastor Hassan. God took him to heaven and he entered the library in heaven. And the man was reading a book intently. And when he was thinking, who is this? The man corresponded his thought and said, I am Enoch. I'm the friend of God. And he said, what book are you reading? And he opened the book and he said, it's called the heart of the father. It's not a book. They are studying the different dimensions of love that are in the heart of the father. The iros, the stogie, the agape, all kinds of love. The loves that has to do with erotic intimacy with God. That a man can abandon everything and is just weeping in God's presence. It's a dimension of love that is stronger than wine. That's the kind of love the Bible said is stronger than death. It's called iros. It's a romantic, explosive kind of love. There are men that love God in that fashion. So when you talk about God, they will die there. He said, Paul and Barnabas, this be the man that hazarded their lives. It's a love that makes you unreasonable and insensitive. So when they get to heaven, the friends of God, what they do for eternity is to study the heart of God. They open this chamber and they see Iros. They open this chamber, they see Stoggy. They become God's family. They open this chamber, they see Philio, they become his friend. They open this chamber, they see Akape. They, they can die a million times for God. These are the kind of men, they are not here for ministry. Ministry is a body. He said, for me to die is Christ. The greatest gain Paul was looking for was to die. You don't learn that in the Bible school. It's a journey of intimacy. Where if God said, leave ministry, you say, thank you, Father. You have done me a favor. And you can retire from ministry and stay on the altar. Hidden without fame or popularity for the rest of your life. And you'll be so satisfied. You were blessed by the message you just listened to. And wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your Son, Jesus Christ. And that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I am born again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you just say this prayer, please send us an email on amodiscipleship at gmail.com or reach us on our website, orocomichael.com to enable us to reach you and afford us the privilege to disciple you. God bless you.